Microsoft's new Surface Pro 12 is a smaller, more affordable version of the Surface Pro 11. And there's never been a more tablet-like Surface. Just like an iPad or Android tablet, the Pro 12 has an ARM chip, zero cooling fans and a minimalistic design. We tested the Surface Pro 12 extensively in our office, on train rides and on the couch. We used Photoshop, drew sketches, played games and did a lot of office work. For us it feels like a sort of spiritual successor to the Surface Go series, which were cheaper and way too underpowered. Microsoft clearly wants to fix that with this tablet, but they've also raised the price to $799.99 without accessories. Whether that's a price worth paying is what you'll find out in this review. We'll start with an unboxing. The packaging looks almost exactly like other Surface devices. The box was already opened since this is a review unit from Microsoft. Inside is the tablet itself, which we have in a nice violet color. Then there's the usual paperwork and a USB-C cable, but no charger anymore. Microsoft also removed the Surface Connect port from the tablet. We got the new keyboard cover in the same color. Included again is paperwork and the slim pen tool. It's the same one as with the Surface Pro 11, but this time it doesn't charge through the keyboard. We also got a Microsoft Arc mouse on loan. It comes in the same color. Looks nice, but Shandor, who tests Windows devices for us, didn't like it. Some weeks have passed since we recorded the unboxing and as mentioned we tested the Pro 12 thoroughly already. The display is exactly 12 inches. Compared to the Surface Pro 11 it looks much more elegant and ergonomic. That's mainly due to the new completely fanless design. The fan vents and bulky fan components of earlier models are gone. Now it feels more like an iPad than a traditional Windows machine. But the iconic Surface Kickstand is still there, letting us prop it up at almost any angle. On your lap, the Pro 12 is harder to balance than a traditional laptop. The kickstand needs space at the back and the keyboard cover at the front. Still, it's far more stable than an iPad Pro or Air with Apple's Magic Keyboard. Compared to other premium tablets, the display bezels are quite thick. The front camera, several microphones and Windows Hello sensors are integrated into the top screen bezel as usual. Face recognition works great. It's fast, very reliable and even works in low light. The speaker grills are located at the top left and right edges. On the right side of the device there are two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports which are also used for charging with speeds up to 45 watts. You'll also notice that there is no Surface Connect port anymore. That's a pity since we like the magnetic charging connector on the previous models. At the bottom are five pogo pins for magnetically connecting the keyboard cover. The connection is solid. The back is plain, there's not much besides the big Microsoft logo on the kickstand. We're disappointed that the easy to open M.2 SSD slot from the Pro 11 and earlier versions is gone. Now if you want more than 256GB of storage, you will need to order the more expensive configurations. The 12 inch LCD display has a resolution of 2196 by 1464 pixels, which equals a pixel density of 220 ppi. The aspect ratio is 3 by 2 which we really like for work. With a max brightness of 400 nits the display doesn't sound super bright on paper but in everyday use it looks surprisingly bright even in a bright train. That's probably because Microsoft used a very good display with high contrast. We also like the refresh rate of up to 90 Hz. Overall the display is good but it could be better. We tested the Surface Pro 11 with an OLED and that one looks noticeably nicer and also drains less power. The dual stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos offer a decent sound. Compared to the iPad Pro or Surface Pro 13 inch however, there's a lack of volume, dynamics and depth. Voices sound clear and you can watch YouTube without issues, sure. For a Windows device, the speakers are good. But in the same price range, Apple and Samsung tablets offer much better sound. Inside the Pro 12 is the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Plus with 8 cores. There's an Adreno GPU, 16GB DDR5 RAM and 512GB of UFS storage in our test unit. Other configurations include 256GB, 1TB and optionally 24GB of RAM, but that varies a lot by region. Performance in everyday tasks is very good. 
Office Work, Chrome with many tabs and Canva designs all run smoothly. Photoshop works well, Premiere Pro too, even though it only runs using that emulator. That really surprised us. We installed Premiere Pro and were able to work with Full HD videos without any issues. However, it gets noticeably warm when installing larger apps or during multitasking. Without fans, this quickly leads to throttling, especially noticeable in gaming. In Geekbench, the single core performance is on par with the Surface Pro 11 with the Snapdragon X Elite. But multi-core is about 15% slower. In GPU benchmarks, the Pro 11 is even twice as fast. In 3D mark benchmarks like Wildlife Extreme and Solar Bay, the Pro 12 also falls behind significantly. Intel Core Ultra 200 laptops like the Acer Switch 16 AI perform better in both CPU and GPU tests. But for normal apps, the performance here is more than enough. Gaming is not a strength of this tablet. Counter-Strike 2 runs at 1900 by 1280 with all settings on minimum at around 34 fps. But it stutters and freezes constantly, likely from being emulated. Even the game Straftat 1 vs 1 causes graphic glitches and is unplayable. But with a lightweight game like Terraria, it's clear the Pro 12 can handle simple indie titles. It's just really not meant for demanding games. We only got playable performance by playing with the display resolution. When we set the internal display to Full HD, Counter-Strike 2 runs fine even hitting 60 FPS. But having to switch resolution all the time is neither ideal nor convenient. Let's talk about battery life. Microsoft claims 16 hours of local video playback and 12 hours of web use. In our standard YouTube HD endurance test at max brightness, it lasted 9.65 hours. That's well ahead of the iPad Air M3 with 5.5 hours and the Xiaomi Pad 7 with 7.25 hours. Tablets with OLED like the Galaxy S10 Plus or Surface Pro 11 last about 20% longer. A clear downside? The device gets noticeably hot while charging, which is uncomfortable, especially when drawing or writing. Windows 11 for ARM was improved a lot since release, but you still have to make too many compromises. Many apps are still not natively available for ARM. A lot runs using emulation, including many Steam games and programs like Premiere Pro, but not all apps start. Windows 11 offers some smart touch features like auto-hiding the taskbar or the three-finger gesture for app switching. Still, touch operations often feel a bit clunky. Programs like Photoshop are still designed for mouse and keyboard. In this era, the iPad is clearly ahead thanks to its software which is optimized for touch. Microsoft Copilot Plus promises a bunch of AI features, but in practice only the OCR function really impressed us. It recognizes and copies text on the screen. Natural file search works well and lets you search the explorer not only by file name, but also with description or full sentences. For example, you can type report with shards from March and Windows will show matching files even if those keywords aren't in the file name. It's super handy but only works with certain file types. The new Surface Keyboard for $150 can no longer be used at an angle, which feels like a step backwards. Still, we like it for everyday use. Build quality is great, there's no flex and typing feels precise. The touchpad is small but reliable. Compared to Apple's Magic Keyboard, this keyboard feels more practical and far less bulky. The Slim Pen 2 costs $130 and now charges via induction on the back of the tablet. The magnets are strong enough to keep it attached in a backpack. A light vibration while writing simulates a paper-like feeling, which feels odd at first but you can get used to it. If you still have the classic Surface Pen, you can use that one too. We even prefer it for its rounder shape. It's more comfortable in your hands. We made some simple sketches in Microsoft Paint with the pen and responsiveness and accuracy are excellent. It has a full HD front camera, which is perfectly fine for video calls. It delivers a clear image and is great for team meetings or Zoom calls. The rear camera has 12 megapixels and produces visibly better images than the front camera. During our test, we took the Pro 12 on a walk and snapped some photos. The images show strong contrast and natural colors. The results are surprisingly good for a tablet and can definitely do the job in a pinch. The Surface Pro 2 starts at $800. Add the keyboard and pen and you are at over $1,000. 
that's almost the price as an iPad Pro 11 inch. Except the iPad has the better pen, better display, better speakers and better tablet apps. Still, the Pro 12 is a good tablet. We really enjoy testing it, both Chandra and I. But it's aimed at a very specific, rather small target group. Mobile professionals who need Windows, do typical office work, travel a lot and want a light premium device. It's too expensive for students, too incompatible for creators and unsuitable for gamers. If Microsoft included the keyboard and pen for free or dropped the price by $200, the Pro 12 would appeal to a much wider audience. As it stands, it remains a niche product for managers, lecturers or tech geeks who value premium design and mobility and are okay with the compromises or who simply need Windows. And actually, that group is quite large.